recently you saw me bring home my new project car. And before I go broke buying parts, I thought I'd replicate it in BeamNG and remember how these awesome cheap mid-engine cars drive. So I started making one of the most jank mod bodies ever for automation. Just look at that ugly meshing work. I am not used to doing closed body designs. Also, enjoy body morphing. Okay, maybe I won't go that extreme. Now, I love part spin special cars. So, I this car just really cries out to me. They took some of the most bland stuff and made some of the best car that's probably existed in a very long time. We got a mid-transverse. So what they did is they took the Rover Metro, which apparently is quite an abysmal car, and they took the front drive train section, because it was front-wheel drive, and then put it in the rear, and then basically put the front drive section in with just the suspension only. It was so weird. So we got McPherson Strut on the front and McPherson Strut on the rear. It is unusual. And on top of that, the suspension itself is unusual. But more on that later. These came with a lovely little engine. Mine is unfortunately one of the least powerful ones, but it is still the 1.8 liter with a bore of 80, which is right down here. And then a stroke of 89.3. That is quite the uh, ratio here. This is not gonna rev particularly well. Dual overcam, four valves per cylinder and more aluminum. Mine doesn't have variable valve timing so we'll skip that. And it has one of the world's weirdest looking manifolds. I can't actually tell what exactly it is that I'm looking there at there. It looks like it's really set for low RPM power because it's really long and not particularly thick. thick. Something like that looks like it's right in our wheelhouse. And looking at the numbers, we should reach our peak power at 5,500 RPM. So yeah, somewhere around like a 6,000 RPM red line looks about right. Short cast, yeah, maybe, I don't know. And then a straight through and no muffler on the rear. And we're aiming for about 89 kilowatts or 120 horsepower. This is a very low revving engine. I am actually struggling really hard to get that power at that RPM right now. Oh, okay. No, we got the RPM still staying low and then it just jumps up. God damn it. Screw it. We're going to fake a higher octane so we can get what we want. So we want a lower cam profile somewhere around there and then bump that compression ratio up until we get to what we need. So now we've got too high of a torque rating. God damn it. Oh, I just put in really weak valve springs. Ah, that makes sense. And after just, you know, a buttload of time. We finally got it like really, really close. The only thing is, is our torque is coming in about 1,300 too many RPMs. The peak torque should be somewhere around here. No, well, yeah, right there. That's where our peak torque should be. <sighs> but it'll do. It's fine. And let's give our fantastic little bit of an engine a lesson. Oh, that does sound peppy. With no mufflers, maybe, because it is very quiet still. Nah, it's sounding a little tractor-ish. So yeah, muffler back in. And here is our body. And the body morphing goes too far, but still, that's an option for you. Then we got a little bit of windshield movement there, but because of my janky meshing, that's not turned out great. Then you got some rear movement there. You could try to cover that stuff in. If that's really what you want to do, I've really underdesigned it to be exactly like the original. So the movement's kind of just in about there. Same with the rear. You can do whatever you want. It's, it's just ridiculous. Uh, or just squish it up if you're, I don't know, psychopathic. But the piece de resistance in the absolute curseness of it all is moving the fenders out. That is some super duper jankness right there. And we've got the same on the front. Yeah, I, I got lazy. It's there if you want it. Would I suggest it? No. No, I wouldn't. Let's get on to the gearbox though. So it's gonna be a manual, it's gonna be a five speed, and I wonder if there's like specifications on gearing. It seems that the final drive ratio is meant to be apparently 3.938. 9.38, that's as close as we're gonna get there. And then we've got 0.76 for fifth gear. Apparently we can't change fifth gear. That's weird. Well, we could change first gear and first gear seems to be 3.16. 
seven. So right about there. Top speed in first gear is 53 kilometers an hour. That sounds about right for Econo boxes. Now I'm pretty sure these are going to be an open differential. You know, keeping that cost down. Part spin special car this, by the way. Fantastic, I love it. So we'll keep that as is. It's gonna be radial compound. Now I have this readout for from tire power and they reckon that the fronts are 185s, 55s. So I believe we have the right diameter set by default for the mod. So if you're looking at the mod, that's about what it should be. It's just the rears aren't the right exact size. And I believe it's 205 for the rear. Yep, 20550 on 15s. So that's about right. They're actually very, very similar tires front to rear. Alloy wheels as well. Brakes will probably be vented. Actually, I've never looked this up. So this I don't know about. Either way, you could probably bet that they're gonna be symmetrical because they just grabbed the parts. There seems to be like a semi cladding smooth under tray. So we'll go with that at least. A little bit of brake airflow. Interior is a two seater and then a manual soft top. Sports interior and I mean, it'd be more like a standard or a basic CD, but they, we don't go that light. So let's just go like a standard cassette. Uh, I don't know if it comes with power steering, but it would seem superfluous to come with the uh, power steering. Might have ABS, so we'll put that down for now. And then standard 90 safety, nothing particularly special. It'd have an airbag, that's probably about it. Oh, side intrusion bars, that'd be it. Then this is the weird thing. It has something similar to hydro pneumatic. So we're gonna go with that and it's gonna be a passive sway bar and then select sport. And immediately right off the bat, the car just comes with massive amounts of oversteer. So we're gonna have to deal with a lot of that. We're gonna just gonna start by removing front camber altogether. And we still have ginormous amounts of oversteer still. This is why I was surprised about the tires being so similar. I. It is, it's baffling why they didn't just make one of them smaller or the other one bigger. I wonder where the engine sits exactly. So let's turn the body off. I feel like the engine is actually meant to be further forward than that. So let's go ahead and move that. So the engine should sit right about here, actually. So it'd be kind of in line with this hub. Let's have another look. And yeah, that, that is too far back. I wish this weight optimizer actually worked. So we're just gonna see what it does currently. Sorry, I meant weight distribution. Unfortunately that hasn't helped to oversteer anyway. So, well, bugger. We're about 100 kilos overweight. So let's maybe make the engine lighter. It seems also that our zero to 100 is off by about 0.5 of a second. So it's not like huge, but that is sizable enough for me to notice. And it's gotta be because that RPM for the torque is way too late. I think we'll do a little bit of a sacrifice there. So we're gonna have less power and more torque than what we should have but the torque does come in later. I think that's a fair trade-off. And we're down to 8.8 .8 seconds, which is 0.1 of a second off. So that's actually doing pretty well right there. I think it's time for us to fettle with our brakes a little bit. So our rear brake force is way too high. So let's drop that off just a buttload. And then we're gonna make both of them about more of a comfortable sort of brake pad. May cause them to cook a little bit, but oh well. Drop that front brake force down. And I think that's about where we're we'll leave that. So a fairly comfortable rake because this was designed to be comfortable and sporty. Now let's pick the paint color that we currently got. This did actually come in a purple color and the previous one I own like yonks ago was actually this purple as well. It was really weird. Like it was kind of like that. Yeah. Like all of this, oh my God, such a bad color, but it was pearlescent, so you would see blue coming through. In fact, actually, I think I might replicate that one because it is a more interesting paint color. There we go. That works out. I wonder if this will actually show up properly in BeamNG. It probably won't. Now let's have a look. The quarter mile of this car is meant to be somewhere around 17.7 seconds. We do it in 16.5 seconds. Okay, so maybe that little bit of extra torque does give us quite the advantage, but it's still quite a slow car. Let's just go ahead and fix this suspension issue that we have. There we go. That should about do it. Man, this is super... Yeah, inverse of what you'd expect. I've got 1.3 degrees of, oh my God. Also, the other thing was, is this car is apparently originally tuned to have quite a lot of understeer. I, how? 
how does this, how was this thing tuned to have understeer? Let's go ahead and model this thing. First thing we got is that weird sort of bug eye look, but I don't actually mind it. Usually on a lot of cars, I hate it, but this one's not so bad. Now, because the light does actually go in a little bit on the actual car, what we're gonna do is a little bit of cheating. We're gonna turn the outside glass off. Then we're gonna grab this thing here and move that into place and use this as the glass. And I think that'll do. I don't know, it's kind of weird that I had to paint it body colored, but yeah, you get the idea. And it seems we have some UV meshing issues. So instead of fixing that, what I'm gonna do instead is put a patch in and then make it body colored. There, good. Nobody could tell. Front grill time. I wonder what I should use. And then because it has like a split thing down the middle, let's grab something like this. Hmm. It's almost working, but not really. Let's go ahead and put a lower grill on now. Then for the little indicate Plus uh, thingies? It, yeah, there's nothing really that fits 100%, but this seems close enough. Make that the correct sort of color. Turn that off, even though that doesn't really actually affect PMNG. And that is set to indicate it. So that's all good. Now there's just a few little extra details. We have a look here. There's a little bit of body molding or like uh, shapeness happening here. So let's go ahead and once again use this. That's kind of working out, except for this is now <laughs> growing considerably. I really should fix this as opposed to just using patchwork all the time, but God, I really am surprisingly incredibly lazy. And UV mesh unwrapping, which is what causes this issue, is the pits. I hate doing it. It never works right. Case in point right here. Then really the last thing to do is there's bulges leading down to the headlights. Once again, this fixture, I think. Let's now move on to the side. And the main centerpiece is this vent right here. Unfortunately, there's nothing to really replicate it. Like this is about as close as we get. And I don't think it really suits well enough. Like if we scale it up, it doesn't look right at all. What about this? Yeah, no, that's, that's not working out either, unfortunately. This is probably gonna be the closest which is unfortunate because it doesn't look particularly good. You can say that this is like the ZT side grill. I think that's unfortunately as good as we're gonna get. And this is also in dire need of my de-lipping, kind of like what I did with the knacker duct, as you can see there. Now, one thing I noticed on the rear of this after I've made the mod is this line right here should be a little bit higher, but well, what can you do? If you want it to be correct, go ahead, make the mod yourself, <laughs> I'm lazy. That works for the most part. Now let's put a brake light in there. That works for me. Now that tail lights. Tail lights are always tricky. Luckily though, if you take a bit of a look here, you'll notice that this is the kind of body line here. These don't wrap around at all. So thank God. Which brake light fits the best? Probably, if I'm being honest, once again, none of them. Maybe something like this. It fits kind of the shape. It's looking close enough to a real car. Then we have like a weird mesh grill sort of thing at the bottom here. So we're gonna stick that in and then some exhaust. Now it is only an inline engine, so it doesn't need dual exhaust, but for some reason it has dual exhaust. I don't understand why. Also, why is the muffler sticking out the side like that? What the hell? There's no getting rid of it. It'll just stick out. That's annoying. We're gonna have to do something about that muffler. I wonder if we can paint the exhaust invisible and it won't affect the tips. It probably will because it doesn't export properly, but we'll give it a try. See, we can still see the exhaust tips. Probably not gonna work out that way though. Then a big indentation here for the rear number plate area. That is very deep, but we could just fit one of these in and then number plate it up. Fit you in right about there. Nice. Then regular door handle fixtures and a generic mirror. Got to make that fit within the bounds of the car. And I think we're pretty much done for the exterior. I haven't made the roof paintable. What? Okay, well that, okay, that I will fix. Now I think I'm just going to fettle around and do some interior. And I think we are pretty much done now. Whew, this has taken quite a while. So we're gonna call this Phil Man's MGF. I, I think it's fair enough to name myself after the car. And I mean, 
it's janky as hell, so I'm not really blaming anybody else for how bad it looks. What does automation reckon this thing will do around the track? A 233? I suppose, I mean, it is a very cheap sports car. Or maybe not. This is, uh, okay, let me zoom in on that. 53. $1,000! Now, I know that's an Australian price and it would be different in England, but oh my god, you could have gotten the top spec, like, Holden Monaro sort of thing for this price! No wonder they're not worth particularly much these days. You can see the trade-in price or the private price is like, yeah, not particularly high. Not many of these would have been particularly liked. I found this weird, like, really old, dodgy-looking website, and it says this is the current current pricing for the MGF, current to what date, and then it's got these prices that are actually quite high. Oh, correct of 2002. Ah, okay, so in 2002, this was 15,000, I'm assuming, Great British Pounds? Why is why is there a question mark? <laughs> what? Yeah, I think that's pounds. So even then, it wasn't particularly cheap. That is very expensive. And the top of the line, the one which is apparently the best of the MGF, is 20,000 pounds. Air conditioning was 1,100 pounds. Oh my god, okay, that's enough of that website. Let's go export this. I think they probably could have saved a bunch of money if they didn't go with that hydropneumatic suspension. Hold on, actually, what is our price right here? $41,300. Oh my god, how is this so expensive? Yeah, I went with partial aluminium and whatever AHS steel is. And in BMNG, our exhaust is, yes, invisible. That is quite irritating. Also, there's a huge hole in the back of the body. That wasn't there in automation? What is that? Anyway, most of the rest of this has turned out pretty well. The color is, I mean, it's still purple, so you don't get the blue hueish tint, unfortunately. But it'll have to do. Let's try seeing what this is. Why is that there? What? Anyway, let's go try it out. Drive around a little bit. It is fairly peppy. That is not a slow car. I mean, it's not a fast car either. <laughs> but for like the mid 90s, at eight point something seconds, zero to 100, that's pretty good. Like democratizing acceleration uh, would have come with the Nissan Skyline GTR from the late 2000s. Still not a particularly cheap car. And that brought down like the price of good acceleration to about god damn it uh what is it 4.4 seconds i think it was so yeah i mean it's not the slowest car and a couple of years later they were still only a little bit faster than that but i cannot <laughs> justify the price for this thing that's phenomenal i mean i know it's a convertible so you're paying a little bit more for that but jesus bro my good god man and it's insane also what is the body roll like it's all right under braking, not so bad. Under acceleration, there is almost no lunge. And then again, we are going quite fast. All right, what is our high-speed cornering like? So we're coming up to slingshot now, and uh, uh, <laughs> it's wayward. It's very wayward. Ah! Oh, that's unfortunate. Now, I happen to know this car is actually not that bad. I have driven it before, so this is a bit silly, but we're going to try that again. See if uh, it's maybe my driving. Again, it's slingshot this time a lot faster. Oh, it's twitchy. It's very twitchy. Oh, okay, there we go. It's actually handling quite nicely now. Okay, that was like a weird... At 180, it's bad. At 200, it's fine. And then slow it down, bring it into Bavarian Bend. ABS is working quite nicely. Oh. This thing is not bad under brakes. Nice. I mean, I think realistically this thing does have a little bit of a uh, diffuser-like rear end that would help reduce drag and a smidgen bit of lift. So we could probably do that. Oh God, this thing, it brakes better than what I expect. Yeah, <laughs> this thing still oversteers like crazy. Why didn't they go narrower tires? Like, what sort of witch car? Okay, I will admit, it is the weirdest looking McPherson strut suspension I have ever seen. So I don't fully understand it. Maybe there was some sort of like geometry thing that really helped. Maybe, you know what, it might have towing. <laughs> okay, uh, that was sketchy as hell. 
Let's come to a stop. Let's put in some toe in on the rear. Rear toe in. Let's try it now and see if this thing is, you know, a little less wayward. Because my god, that's just absolutely super jank. Here we go, coming around. Oh, okay. This thing is immediately a whole lot better. Like, <laughs> unfathomably, this is now a completely different car. I could control a little bit of a drift on the way into a corner. That is so much better. I should maybe figure out a way to make that default before I upload this to the BeamNG repository. <laughs> okay, slowing down. Turn in. Doing pretty well. Oh my god, this is so much better immediately. And we got that little bit of understeer in which this car was apparently susceptible to. Susceptible? Or susceptible? I can't remember. I think it's susceptible. Anyway. This is doing pretty well. I might try to do some laps with this. I have tried to do laps on other tracks with uh, other cars. So let's see how it does. We're going to start on this one, though. Currently, I think my lap time around here is probably like a two minute, like or somewhere close to. Now, this is not going to be absolutely blistering around this track, so I don't expect to get that high. And I haven't taken hypercars around yet, so... I don't have a lot of lap times down. I might uh, do an updated version of my, uh, the Suzicorn that I made a while ago. God, I love that thing. And uh, take that one around, see if I can't do a good time there. Just to set like a benchmark for fast cars. And then slow it down here, coming into Ban Hammerhead and whoa. Okay. There's a nice little bit of drift under braking. It feels rather nice, actually. Just like 50% toe in Completely changed the car in... Like, look at that! I could control that. It is so smooth on oversteer. There was actually, you know, pretty much no steering whatsoever input just then. It just did it all itself. And now coming down the back straight, we're going to see once again the slingshot now with this toe in It should be... Hopefully a lot more controllable at about 190, nearly 200, good. And, oh, okay, it's a little bit wayward, but with the very subtle steering inputs, it's actually not too bad. Okay, good. Now bringing it down to Bavarian Bend, slow down at about the 200 mark, lifting a little bit. Oh! <laughs> Off camber corner, of course, is going to make it quite tricky for a uh, mid-engine car, especially one with the weight so rear bound. Now, I know that I visually changed the weight forwards, but I don't think that actually changed anything. Let's try braking just before the 50, and nope, that was too late, but that's fine. We were able to recover it and make not a particularly terrible uh, ham-fisted attempt at that. Bringing it around now through Popsicle, and pretty decent. Now, Adam's Apex at speed will catch out even the most, like, a uh, the like it'll it'll catch out most cars with problematic steering especially if you've tried to hide it it'll still pop up there but it did actually quite well through atoms and now cossacks oh a little bit lively we uh did a little bit of lift of uh, lift off oversteer with maybe a little bit of a weight transfer drift and slowing it down through lamps hope and speeding it down to the end, we're actually pretty dead on for what automation said, which I think it was a 233. My god, that is dead on 233. My slowest car, unfortunately, so far. I'm probably gonna try to fix that patch hole thing in the back there, and then we'll go to a different map. So it turns out all I needed to do was actually just re-export the car, and everything was fine and dandy. So, we're just gonna go ahead and now take this around the handling circuit. I should really bring the go-kart back to, like, put down my blistering time. I don't understand how that, like, little go-kart was able to put down such a good time. Damn it! So... Ups and downs are a little bit problematic. So come down here into the dip, it'll make the weight transference quite aggressive, but that's fine. We'll turn in. That's doing well. And then got this long sweeping corner, very bumpy to unsettle the car as much as possible. Brake coming over a rise is going to make the rear end really light, but I was able to keep that under control. Coming here for this really tight hairpin. Oh, inducing mahoosive amounts of understeer through there. Keeping two tires at least on the bitumen at all times. And understeer! Oh, back okay, dealing with now being a bit of a rally car. <laughs> I don't think this thing would do particularly well at rally. Now, I have stated that this thing is basically a baby Lotus Elise. 
After looking at the prices, maybe I don't quite disagree, uh, quite agree with that anymore. But still, by today's used price, I still do stand by it. It is a, like, um, a really cursed, janky little brother of, like, a Lotus Elise. Not quite as powerful, not as peppy, not as good at handling, but still, you're getting a mid-engine car, you can do a lot to it, and they are so cheap right now. Like, I, don't, I doubt the prices are going to go up on them. They are a very cheap car, and they have been a very cheap car for a very long time. So, don't be surprised uh, if you can still find these for a good price years down the line. And actually, you know what? It's the fastest one I've sent around. Do I know what the others two are? No, because Beam and G is currently just jank. Let's now compare this to the bollard. I don't see any issue with this. This is actually going to be incredibly slow in comparison. I get the feeling I'm going to say it's probably going to be about 30 seconds slower. Not that I'd be able to tell though because all the names on the lap times are just really annoyingly now just no license or whatever it was saying. So that's quite annoying. Took that corner quite nicely. We don't actually have the toe in set currently. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful. I probably should have set that before we took off. And still doing actually pretty smoothly. I think it's just automation test track is not really a racetrack per se. It is actually more of a, uh, a test track. As the name would imply, it's got all of those off-camber corners, you've got the high-speed parts there which are designed to tighten up towards the end of the corner. It is problematic, but we get through all of these chicanes here quite nicely. And now the only one of two corners which I think we're going to have major problems with. How do we do? Uh, okay, so there we go. That is the highest speed cornering we're gonna probably do in this car, and it handled it like a champ. So we're now coming down the back straight and into the braking zone. Oh, I braked way too early, that's fine. A little bit of a readjustment in the middle of the corner and out we come. Maybe I didn't need to do the readjustment in the middle of the corner, but well, whatever. We did pretty well, got through there. No major time loss, slow down here and get through that corner. Oh God, damn it. And we were doing so well. This is my first lap as well still. Corkscrew, slow it down, get it turned in, cut as much as possible, cut as, m oh, okay, well, we went a little bit wide in that corner. We are accident uh, unfortunately listing a little bit leftwards, which is problematic. But now we got the final chicane through there and then high speed through here. Nope, ah, oh, okay. We're doing so well. Let's retry that right after we put some toe in. So let's try this again. I have readjusted the toe. This is still only my second lap though. Oh, still that corner seems to catch us out. Unfortunately, going into this, I, I'm, I know I know it's not actually the corkscrew, but like this corkscrew like corner. Still that did pretty well though. I think we're on for a not terrible time. And now we got the final chicane this time. Hopefully we won't go around because one, we don't have damage, and two, we have that toe in to help us out a little bit. That got those super duper scary. Now, a two minute 23, not bad. Still my slowest time, but there was another one that was only ever so slightly faster. And then all these ones, which I just don't know because it doesn't explain anything. And apparently somehow this guy has done a lap on my computer. I don't, I don't understand how that works. Let's do some industrial map stuff. I actually used to love the industrial map. It was my definitively favorite map. Unfortunately, they've ruined it a little bit and the maps aren't quite so fun for these low powered cars, which I love so much, but still, we're gonna give it a try. Now, I know that we're going way too much into racing for a car, which is not actually a race car, but still, I wanna have as much fun I, as I can with this because it's low power, it feels Honest, oh my god, I probably should have waited for the map to load before I did anything. And now I don't actually have the toe in tuned. Nah. Okay, well, I stopped up the first corner already. Okay, with the, the suspension tuned, or at least the toe in tuned a little bit, let's try first corner again. Immediately, much uh, smoother drive. It is a little bit understeery, but I mean, for like the lowest common denominator of you know, not great driver, we'll put it that way. 
it's going to be a lot safer that sort of way. And yeah, the, they did make the cars that way, and it's actually not doing so bad even still. Oh, didn't get turned in quite as much. I was accidentally following the rubber marks on the road, and the rubber marks on the road go super duper wide, unfortunately. And that is a weird corner. I'm not used to that. And now bringing it down to the final corner and onto the back straight. Are we going to do a good time? 54 seconds. Ah, it's my third fastest. The other one is my Formula EV. Wow, that's a long time ago. Let's now take it through Italy, because this will be the closest country to uh, where this car was made, which would have been in England. And oh God, I don't know this track very well. I should probably turn like the sat navigation on for this particular thing. Oh my God, I am getting a lot of lag right now. Italy is not the best optimized map, unfortunately. It is still one of my favorites. It does look really nice. I have no idea where I'm going, by the way. I'm just hoping that, yep, good. I am on the right road still. And then, <laughs> oh, okay, actually, we pulled up rather nicely in that. That was pretty good. I wouldn't mind if Beam and G devs were to... You know what, no. I, I want the Beam and G devs to work more on things like optimization. But if they were to make a first party, like, MGF sort of knockoff, that would be amazing. Partsman special card? The lore on this thing just writes itself. It's so much fun to just think about what they were doing to make this car. Oh! Oh, okay, breaking downhill, not great, and I am stuck in the barrier. Oh, no. That's also a bad choice of barrier. Devs, tisk tisk. Don't make that MGF knockoff clone sort of thing. Uh, fix your stuff, bro. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, I stuffed up. Oh, a little bit of lag there. That all sucked. I'm getting a lot of lag on this map. My goodness, there is so much lag. How many checkpoints do we have to do? Oh my goodness. That is a lot of checkpoints so far. Nope, still not the end. Still more checkpoints. Am I going left? There we go. And there's the end. My god, that is a, a tricky map to know. But a 1 minute 16. Now this car will be in the Beam and G repository. So feel free to go try it out in its full jankness or make your own because it will be available in the automation uh, Steam Workshop section. But for now, as we take this lovely scenic road all the way up through Italy, having a bit of a fun, doing all the switchbacks and everything like that, I will catch you guys next time. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time. Did I already say that? I think I might have. Anyway, enjoy this bit of driving. Oh, well, maybe not that much. And take two on driving through the hills, not in this kind of way.